nobody ever saw the construction of Coral Castle, which is built from blocks of sedimentary limestone weighing many tons, raised single-handedly by Edward Lee Skelnan, a short and skinny man. He refused to allow anyone to observe his methods of moving stone. He worked at night by the light of a lantern. Edward's apparent ability to levitate massive columns of rock has baffled scientists for years. <music> Journalist and author Joe Bullard has always been fascinated by the mystery of Coral Castle. Bullard writes that Edward Leed Skalnin was born in Latvia, and as a boy, he was sickly and weak. In the fourth grade, he dropped out of school because he was not strong enough to walk there every day. He fell in love with a girl of 16. As a young man at the age of 26, her name was Agnes, and together they made plans to marry. However, the day before the wedding, Agnes changed her mind, breaking off the engagement. To escape the pain of this relationship, Edward fled to Canada, where he found work in a lumber mill. For five years, he culled massive trees from the Canadian forest. Then he contracted tuberculosis, becoming too weak to hold down his job. He carved a walking stick and began to travel south by foot, crossing the border into the United States, and he did not stop until he came to the state of Florida. The doctor told him he only had six months to live. This is when he began planning the construction of his fortress. The year was 1918. Anybody who contracted TB was sure to die from it in very short order. In 1919, his doctor diagnosed him as cured. Lee Skalnan beat the odds. He went on to work on his castle at night, between midnight and six in the morning, with no one to help him and without the aid of heavy machinery. The stones he moved had an average weight of six tons, twice the weight of the three-ton stones of the Great Pyramid. One moonless evening, the castle was approached by a couple of teenagers, crawling low like a pair of alligators. They claimed to have witnessed a huge column of rock, 20 feet in length, which floated up into the air, over the wall, and into the fortress. They said it moved like a hydrogen balloon. In daytime, the grounds inside were open to the public. Edward would charge visitors an entrance fee of 10 cents. The blocks were joined without mortar, depending only on their weight to keep them in place. Other oddities included a two-story tower, a royal throne, a gargantuan sundial, a free-standing obelisk, and rocking chairs made out of rock. Leed Skalnan labored for 18 years in Florida City, on the walls of his citadel and the various monuments within. Because he so treasured privacy for his work, when he learned that nearby land was about to be developed for suburban housing, he decided to move about 10 miles away to the township of Homestead. He also decided to bring his castle with him. He contracted with the driver of a flatbed truck, which was normally used for the transport of great cypress trees. Over the course of a year, one stone at a time, the castle was moved to Edward's new address. Edward would direct the truck driver to back up his vehicle 
to one of the enormous coral blocks. Then he would ask the man to leave for a period of four hours. One day, the driver thought he might catch Edward in the act of moving a stone. So instead of waiting hours, he returned after only 15 minutes. Lead Skalnin was nowhere to be found, but he did find the coral block. It was already loaded on the back of his truck. Some believe Edward Lead Skalnin relied on forces of magnetism to aid his labors. Magnetism which could also be utilized to heal. He was known to suggest to sickly children to take a seat upon the chair in the throne room. Joe Bullard interviewed an 82-year-old woman who confided she had been one of those children. She was sick with epilepsy. But ever since that day, she sat upon the coral throne. She never had another problem with her health. Demonized.